All right, here we have a 2005 KLX110. Um, the race season is over, so we're going to kind of winterize the bike. We're going to do this by changing the oil, oil filter, adding some gas treatment, and uh, also cleaning the air filter. That way in the spring, when it's that first warm day, you can just pull it out, gas it up, and go riding. You don't have to worry about when your last service was done. It's a good habit to do it in the winter. That way you're ready to go in the spring. All right, so first we're going to start by changing the oil. To do this, you want to remove the skid plate. There's a bolt here, a bolt on the other side, and then there's two bolts that go through the foot peg, through the skid plate, and into the case that hold the lower part of the skid plate in position. We want to remove those four bolts, that way we can remove the skid plate and gain access to our oil filter. All right, so we removed the skid plate. Now we can start the bike, let it warm up. As it's always a good practice to change the engine oil as it's warm, it'll help remove other foreign particles from the motor. All right, now that the engine is warm, we can take our ratchet, crack loose the drain plug, and let it drain into our pan. Be careful as the engine oil is warm, so you want to move quickly out of the way. And let it drain into your pan. All right, so with our engine oil almost done, we can make sure the pan is under our oil filter cover and remove that. We're going to use a five millimeter Allen wrench, remove the two bolts that hold the cover in position. That way we can change the oil filter. All right, so we just removed our oil filter cover and oil filter. Um, it's a good idea before you throw the old oil filter out to match it up to your new one, just to make sure that they are the same size and indeed the right filter for the bike. All right, now that you know you have the correct filter, we can take a rag and wipe down this flat surface as that's where the oil filter cover seals to, so we want to make sure it's clear of any debris. Um, you can get away with reusing your O-ring for the oil filter cover a couple of times, but after that you want to replace it just so you don't have any leaks. All right, once you're done with that, it's always a good idea to take the new filter, inspect the O-ring, inspect the filter part itself for any damage or deformities. Uh, once you've done that, we can install the new filter. All right, so installing the new filter, you want to make sure this O-ring is towards the bike. That should slide onto this nipple here and hold it in position until you put the cover on. All right, so we're going to install the cover next. Uh, first, you want to remove your old O-ring, uh, wipe down where the O-ring meets the cover. That way it can seal properly without leaking. Uh, once you've done that, you can install your new O-ring, and then we'll reinstall the cover over the oil filter. All right, so we've finished installing our oil cover. Uh, we snugged it down, so that part's ready to go. Next, we're going to reinstall the drain plug. Before you do, you want to wipe down the surface around the drain plug hole just to make sure it can seal properly. All right, there's always some debate on what engine oil is right for these engines. Some people say a 50-50 blend, some people say a full synthetic, some people say non-synthetic. Um, it's your bike, it's your choice. I say if you have a modified bike like this one, you should be running some type of synthetic, whether 50-50 or full. Uh, if you have the stock bike, you can run the non-synthetic oil. I've always had good luck with the Castrol Superbike. Uh, that's what I run. It's a full synthetic. It's a 1040. Um, whatever oil you do choose, try to stick with the same name brand and the same type, synthetic or non, throughout the life of the engine. All right, when you're filling your oil, you want to make sure the bike is centered in the upright position. That way you can get an accurate reading on your sight glass. All right, so we have our engine oil in. We've also reinstalled our oil filler cap and snugged it down. Uh, with that done, we can start the bike, let it warm up. Once it's warm, we'll shut it down. We'll recheck our oil level in our sight glass. We want to make sure it's just touching the top notch. Um, if it's not, you can add some, get it into that desired level. Once it's at that desired level, we can reinstall the skid plate. All right, so before you install your skid plate, it's a good idea to check around the oil filter cover and also the drain plug for any leaks. Once you determine you have no leaks, we can reinstall the skid plate. I recommend some blue Loctite on these bolts that hold the skid plate in place, especially these that hold the foot pegs as they have a tendency to loosen up. Once we get those all secured and tight, we can move on to the next step. All right, so now you want to do something to treat the fuel. Um, some people use stable. I would recommend this Startron fuel treatment. Uh, it seems to work a lot better than stable. So what I do is ride up and down the driveway till I hit reserve, ride it back to the house, add the recommended amount, ride up and down the driveway two more times. That way it'll mix in with the gas and make its way into the carburetor. That'll keep the carburetor from turning to the varnish from the new ethanol fuel. Um, it also might be a good idea to throw a new spark plug in it. That way it'll start easier in the spring too. Once you've done all that, that's it. You just winterized your KLX 110. 